<laughs> Hi guys, we're back. Ugh, never, it never fails. Technology is a wonderful thing as long as it works. So, uh, what was I gonna say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we have the problem solved. Yeah, it was just one of our cameras was. One of our cameras took a vacay. So, sorry about that, guys. Um, I am going to start over on this one just so that we keep everything, um, so that we have everything on the one video. So, we have gone ahead and base coated our surface with lamp black, and we've done the same to the frame. And then you're going to stamp it. And I use the brayer to load my stamp. So, I've used the 24 karat gold. That's the Decorts Extreme Sheen. And we're gonna put a little bit on here just so I can show you how this is done. So, a little bit of gold. And I use the brayer to roll it out until we get a nice even distribution of paint, like so. And then once you have it on there, you take the brayer and you roll the gold paint onto the stamp. And then, you take the stamp and you stamp onto your surface. Just randomly across the surface so that you get something that resembles text on there. And then once it's completely dry, you use what's left of that gold paint and your favorite fugly brush. Remember the fugly brush? Which is a dynasty three quarter oval it's an encaustic. So you just pick up a little of that gold paint on your brush and then spatter the entire surface, frame and all. I'm gonna push that one out of the way. And I spatter the frame. Just lightly, you don't want a ton of it on there, but it just puts a little bit of sparkle onto the frame as well. So get the brayer out of there. And let's clear up this palette. I'm going to get to painting. So we'll set that frame aside to dry. So this is what you should end up with. Now, while you're painting your flowers, just leave it out of the frame. It's easier to handle. And then it can just, once you're finished painting, you can drop it in and just push that back in place. Now, these frames that I have here, this little surface. These are made by Sheila Bergner Landry. Um, she has a website called tollpaintingdesigns.com. Her surfaces are beautiful. These are not laser cut, these are all hand cut. She does them on a scroll saw. And so each one of these inserts will only fit the frame that it comes in. So you notice she's the attention to detail is amazing with her. So she has the back and the insert marked so that you know where to line them up and then you just simply press that insert back and it forms the frame. Beautiful surface and you can do so many different things on it. It's a really great surface. So we have our surface already base coated and you're going to put base coat one of those chipboard butterflies while you're at it. It's going to get lamp black. This one is going to get attached to the frame. Now the base coats for this piece are very simple. The poppies get base coated with about two coats of primary red. You might need three, but two will probably do the trick. It is a very transparent red, so it doesn't cover very well over this black, but I didn't want to put white on it because I wanted these flowers to be rich and let the highlights do all of the work in this particular case. So I went right over the black with two coats of the primary red. You forgot your microphone again. And I forgot my microphone again. It's been a day. <laughs> and then... We were on time, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were on time. We were on time and everything was working and great. Not so much. So the stems and the leaves are going to be base coated with warm white or with white gesso, either or. So we're going to start with those stems and leaves and I'm going to use a little bit of the green gold 
Now, if you don't have the fluid acrylics, don't worry. You can, uh, you can use uh, matcha green for this if you don't have the, you, the um, green gold. So then you put a coat of that green gold right over top of that warm white or that gesso. Neatness doesn't count with this. These are fluffy, kind of rough looking leaves, so I'm not really worrying too much about getting them utterly perfect. And besides, we're going to shade these as well, so a lot of these little baubles and whatnot aren't going to show up anyhow. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> So that green gold is so vibrant and it's perfect with this red because it pops off that page. I love this gold, or green I should say, green gold. So this is a really easy paint. There is nothing over the top about this. Uh, what you're going to get out of this one is how to use those transparent colors to get great depth because we're not using a lot of colors for this piece. And they're very easy and they're fun to do. And this is just a simple technique. We're just looking for that bright green. Easy peasy. Love it. So now we're going to start uh, building up some shadows on these petals. And I'm using uh, angled shaders for this. I'm a big proponent of angled, angled shaders. I love them. I like that point. I like to be able to get into tight little spots with them. The size that I'm using today is a one quarter and a three eighths. So they're fairly small. They're not super big. And the color I'm going to use for that first shading on these flowers is quinacridone magenta. Now you're going to use this color twice for this and I'm going to float so it's going to be a small quantity of paint on this brush and I just want to get a little of that color in here. You know all of those little areas towards the center of the flower I just want a little of that color in there. So it's not, a, you notice I'm not, um, I'm not worrying too much about neatness or accuracy in this case. I just want to get some of that color in and I want it along the bottom as well. Just like that. So, pretty but not neat. It's just getting that color into that space. And you'll notice that it deepens that red quite nicely. I'm going to do the same thing in here, throw that shading color in those darker areas towards the center and under those folds, just like that. Easy peasy. We're going to do this again after we put in the highlights, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. center area. There we go. So we've got that little bit of quinacridone magenta in there. It's a very bright red but it works really well over top of this. So then we're going to take a little bit of scarlet. Now the scarlet is almost an orangey red. Apparently he doesn't like my placement. And I'm going to switch. Now you can do this with an angled shader or you can do this with a liner or a small round if you're more comfortable with it. I prefer to use my angled shader. And I use a chisel blend method. Now I'm going to get him to zoom in a little bit. I'm already there. Are you already there? Good. Yeah, and you just moved it out of the shot. Sorry. 
I'm a headache. Okay. So <laughs> you'll notice that there's these ups and downs along the edge of the flower. In that dip here is where your highlight's going to go because that is where the flower lifts up. So we're going to put sort of a V-shaped highlight right there and pull it back towards the center of the flower. So every time there's a dip in the edge of it, one of these little V's goes in there. You don't want them too big. They don't have to be perfectly tidy either. So this is that highlight point, meaning that's the part that comes closest to you. It is a sparkly ring. It is sparkly, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay if it looks kind of like a band. That's all right. It's we're going to subdue it in a little bit anyway. Love these videos so far. Thank you, Christmas tea, and may I have the wish tonight with you. Can't wait to paint the whole series. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing to each one of those petals, that little lift, that little V, inverted V, like this, all the way around. Just take that brightest color out, right out to the edge, and you'll notice I'm not being all that neat and tidy with it. I do have to be careful I stay in the shot, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and I'm going to put a couple inside here as well. So you can see that this flower is starting to starting to take shape. It kind of looks like it's got stripes on it right now. Hello from windy Winnipeg. It's always windy in Winnipeg. And hopefully it's not, you know, sub-zero temperatures there yet. <laughs> so again, I'm going to do the same thing to this one at the bottom. So you can see those highlights almost stripe-like showing up on this piece. We're going to give that a second to dry. It's one degree. So it's not sub-zero. It's not sub-zero yet. <laughs> So there we go. Shout out to the cameraman. Shout out to the cameraman. <laughs> yeah, he he keeps me on the straight and narrow. Well, he at least keeps me in the shot. That's <laughs> or tries <laughs> That's to. That's all I can promise. <laughs> <laughs> all I can promise is I'll get get it on camera. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say he was lucky. He grew up in an era where they didn't have. YouTube. I still mess around with cameras. Oh, I know. So, almost got all these highlights in. And like I said, I'm not spending too much time. It's going to look very stripy and iffy for a little bit. And I can brighten them. If you find that they're not, not enough of a contrast, don't be afraid to go over them. I do like to see them quite bright. And besides, we're going to do a lot to subdue that, so. There we go. And I also want to take a little bit out to the tip of this petal. Because I like that bright red. There we go. <laughs> Does your cameraman paint? <laughs> I used to. With an airbrush. I used to airbrush. So now we've got all of those highlights in place. Now we're going to start shaping these petals a bit more. And I'm going to do that again with that quinacridone magenta. I love this color. So I'm going to pick up a little of that quinacridone magenta and we're going to float right over all of it. 
and make sure you pay attention to the opposite dip. That's where you want to put that color, the most of it. So I'm going right over all of that scarlet with that quinacridone magenta. On camera, it looks like it's blistering. It's weird. So I'm going to come down here. And again, that bulk of that color is going to go in that dip opposite of that highlight. Just like so. And I'm going to do the same thing on that upper petal. You'll notice that that, that quinacridone magenta makes that red get a little bit deeper. Uh, is there a substitute for the magenta you're using? Uh, the primary magenta, or quinacridone magenta, it wouldn't be a substitute, but um, all you really need is a good transparent uh, red. So I would look at one of the violets, um, like red violet would probably do it. It's a very deep color. There we go. I have regular magenta. Will that work? Uh, yeah, why not? It's not quite as dark, but um, yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. I have dog hair in my beard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to float at this one at the bottom. You can see that poppy is already taking on a little bit of... See what I mean? Look, it looks like it's blistering. <laughs> this is weird. Just a reflection. So there we go. We got one more petal to do. I love this quinacridone magenta. It's got a deeper purpley tone. I think that's why I suggested the red violet because it has that that little bit of purpley pink to it. Closed caption doesn't know magenta. <laughs> so your next color you're going to add to this. I didn't realize we were closed caption. Is uh, carbon black in the fluid acrylic. You can use lamp black for this. Quinacridone, that's what closed caption doesn't understand. Um, quinacridone. <laughs> so that carbon black, you're going to be, it's going to be a float, but you're going to have to work this brush out quite a bit because we don't want the black full strength. And this is where we're going to deepen a few of those shadows on this poppy. And I'm going to start over here a lot of comments about your ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Disney ring. It's a Disney ring, believe it or not. <laughs> the name of the ring is Elsa. That's pretty. So, carbon black is the float in here. And I've got it a little too strong in that one spot. So, I'm going to it out a little bit. A little too harsh. Yeah, some weird reflections. It really <laughs> does look like it's blistering. Mm -hmm. Oh, wild. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going to put a shadow of that carbon black. And I have thinned this out considerably. Almost too thin. <laughs> If I have days where you can't float, I'm having one of those. Way too much paint in the brush and then too much water. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go somewhere else with that. But... That's 
So that, when I float that black in, I take it right up to the edge of the petal in front of it, like so, so that it gives you that clean edge. And then you can also deepen some of those dips opposite the highlight with a very weak float of the carbon black. And it just deepens that little pocket there between the two. I've got almost no paint left in this brush. Now I'm going to come into that center because we have to pay a little of attention. <laughs> I'm glad you have trouble some days as well. It gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put a little float, and you can see where I'm putting it in between those highlight bands. And it's just a little float to create that center of the petal. <laughs> <laughs> just like that and then I'm going to deepen that little bit at the top of the petals as well on this one and it's a weak float I am NOT using a ton of color it's just to put a little depth in there Priscilla I can never float correctly <laughs> Floating is one of those things that you learn over time. I think it's something that has to be practiced. And the biggest trick is getting the right amount of water in your brush. If you have too much water in the brush, then your float is wonky and sloppy and you end up with halos and all sorts of things that you didn't want. Now, I'm pulling a little of that quinacridone magenta into my black here because I want to put a shadow in but I don't want it to be completely black. I want a little of that transparency. There we go. And I'm going to deepen that shadow in here a little bit. So that is it for the shading. It's essentially just those layers of color. Now I'm going to take some of that um, scarlet. Oh my gosh, couldn't remember that to save me today. And I'm going to thin it out. I've got my micron liner here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. I want to make sort of a tangerine color. Just something a little brighter than the, the scarlet. And I like to add a few little lines here and there. Now, the lines that I add are scribbly and fine. And it sort of it accents the edges of these petals without having to go into too, too much detail. Just like that. Now it softens, softens the edges of the petals a little bit when you do this. You'll notice in some of my patterns, I do this to leaves quite a bit. I add fine scribbly lines to the edges of the leaves. I just like how it looks. It softens things visually. It also will hide like little wobbles and bobbles and imperfections. And I kind of like that. So we're almost at the point where we're going to work on the center of this flower. I'm going to take a little bit of that carbon black and I'm going to put a dip dot in the center, just like that. 
just to create a round rough center. I don't want it too perfect. And I'm gonna dry it really quick. There we go. Where can I get the Micron liner? The Micron, this is a 15 aught extra long detail liner. They have these on the Brush Guys website. They are an excellent, excellent brush. I love the, the detail liner in this line. It's fantastic. Super fine, comes to a gorgeous sharp point. And it comes in a variety of sizes. You can get the extra long, I think, in a 20 yacht as well. Quite affordable. They're not a horribly expensive brush. And if you look on the, um, the link on my YouTube channel, for the brush guys if you click on that link and then use the coupon code tracy m it'll give you an extra discount off of their already really great prices so this is where you have a couple of options you can use um, i'm using matcha green but you can mix your fluid acrylic with a little bit of the warm white that's the green gold and the warm white. Or if you don't have the fluid acrylic, you can use the matcha green. And I'm going to thin this out a little bit because I want it fairly thin. And we're going to put a series of lines around the middle just like this, just to form a little bowl. You notice the direction that I'm going. It's going to form a little bowl around the center of that poppy keep it light I just like the movement and they should be fairly opaque just like that and then we're going to add a highlight to the center of this poppy with a little bit this is lavender at least it would be if it was mixed. It's uh, obviously been sitting there for a while. It's a curly binder. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of paint. There we go. There we go. We paint. Now we've got paint. <laughs> Not a curly binder. So I'm going to just add a series of little purple dots to the center, like so. And then I'm going to use the titanium white. And I'm going to add dip dots on this green area here, just for the center. Nice tiny ones. You don't want them too big or too busy. Just like so. Now, if at any time you feel that your highlights on your poppy have gotten away from you, don't be afraid to go back in and brighten them up a little bit just by going over them with a little of that scarlet. If you feel that they're getting a little lost in there, which I do at this point, I think I overworked them a little bit. I just want to pop in a little more of that scarlet. You can. Just a little touch here and there just to brighten them up. So now we're ready to go on to our leaves. And the color I'm going to use is sap green. Now, if you don't have the fluid acrylic, I know they're hard to get these days, then you can use plantation pine for this. And I'm using my liner again, and I'm going to thin out a little of that. And I'm just going to essentially scribble a little of that color onto those leaves. I'm not working too hard at keeping them perfect. It's just dabbing a little color here and there for those leaves. I'm going to come back in to that matcha green and I'm going to add some highlights here and there too with the matcha green. shading on that stem and 
do that with the plantation pine or the sap green. I'm going to put that underneath that flower, like so. And down at the bottom. I like this sap green, it's gorgeous transparent green. There we go. Now I'm going to put a final highlight on this stem with a little of that matcha green. Just a fine line right there. Now I'm going to dry this really quick. And I know you thought that you were getting away without using a pen today, but not so much. I, I like to take my pen and just put some scribbly texture lines in those leaves. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Besides the poppies, have you tried other flowers on a piece like this? I have, actually. Sheila makes some really beautiful, um, like really beautiful ornament pieces. other designs that I've used on them that work the same way and uh, I'll just quickly show you this I've done these the daisies using them this would translate very nicely to the same surface and I've also done these ones which is the echinacea that would translate really nicely to that surface as well Simply enlarging the design and transferring it on, would these would be really pretty on the same surface. And then you can just paint the butterfly to match the floral. So in this case, I would use the pink with the violet, the quinacridone violet and a cobalt teal hue on a butterfly. I think they'd be really pretty. So, speaking of butterflies, this is the fun part. I love doing these. Um, this is all painted on chipboard. <laughs> They're teeny tiny. Super small. Super small. There they are. This one's about an inch and a inch and a half or an inch and a quarter across. It's a really nice um, little butterfly, and they're just chipboard. So I've put a layer of just carbon black on this butterfly. Got another one here, and this is where that small angled shader comes in. <laughs> So the technique for painting these is very simple. We are not going into a tremendous amount of detail for these butterflies. So you're going to tip load an angle shader. In this case, I'm using a quarter inch angle. <laughs> he zoomed in or zoomed out too far. <laughs> So you're going to start just inside the edge of the wing and it's a tap and pull right on the chisel edge of the brush and you pull the color till it almost meets the body. So this would be the body of the butterfly. And you do the same thing, kind of like a clock. If you'll notice, I'm not turning the brush. Oh, it's hard to see on this black. So tap and pull until it fills that color, but I'm leaving a nice thin line around the outside of the wing. Come back up here. Next coat, you'll be able to see it much better. This is called a chisel blending. It's only called that because you're standing the brush on the chisel edge is this, the sharp edge of that second coat may show up better. So tap and pull. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit with a lot more paint on the brush. 
so that you can see it. So always leaving a little edge all the way around the outside of the butterfly. Now I know it's going to drive you nuts painting on a one inch butterfly, but that's why we have tiny brushes. So this one, I'm going to give this a chance to dry. And we're going to do this again, except this time we're going to use Scarlet, which is that orangey, orangey red. And I'm coming out to the edge where I started the first time. And the, the stroke is much shorter, so it's only coming halfway. And then we we'll do the same thing on each wing segment, but we're only coming halfway. Ooh, what is the item number for the surface? Good question. It's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Give me. What is it? Uh, Tollpaintingdesigns. Designs. Col Tollpainting Designs.com. And there is that pretty one. Hang tight, gals. He's going to pull it up for you. So there is our butterfly so that it matches our poppy. And then we're going to come back to that liner in just a second I'm going to put a highlight on the body of our butterfly and I'm going to do that with a little bit of warm white blending it out heavily and just down the left side of that butterfly I'm going to put a fine float of warm white Now we're going to add some highlights to our butterfly and we're going to do that with that liner and just some tiny little dots. We don't want a ton of them on there but just enough to pop the edge. <laughs> like right there. That's the one. <laughs> so there we go. A few little tiny dots just to highlight the tips of the wings. A little dot for the head and then a fine line for the body. So then the only thing left I'm going to finish out this one in a second, is to drop your painted piece into the frame and give it a little push back. Um, I very rarely use glue on these. Most of the time, once they're painted and you push them back, there's enough pressure holding them in place. Uh, but if you prefer, use a small amount of a clear glue on the inside bevel and then drop them in and push them back. And then you can Take your butterfly. I like mounting mine on the frame so that it overlaps the center of the surface. I like the shadow. It gives it a little elevation, gives it a little dimension, but there is nothing to stop you from dropping it inside the frame either. It's a pretty little addition. I like it. You could and paint the butterfly a different color if that, you know, whatever blows your hair back. So there you have it. That's how you paint scarlet poppies and butterflies. These guys are super easy to paint and they're very forgiving. So don't beat yourself up too much if the floats aren't perfect. It doesn't really matter. You can add details after the fact with your gel pen if you like. 
You know I like, because I like my gel pen. I like adding details here and there, like so. Pretty, pretty. Easy peasy. Like I said, if you have a penchant for butterflies, the package of the chipboard butterflies, there's plenty of them in various sizes. So if you wanted to add um, you know, two or even three, um, feel free. I really think these are quite pretty and they're so simple to do. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I'm going to switch back up go. to the other camera. Hello. Sorry about all the troubles at the very beginning. And I was so excited about coming to paint, I forgot a few things. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I do have a giveaway for today. I have a great giveaway for today. And it's actually going to tie into the midweek for next week. So don't forget to watch for the next week's video. We are going to have this midweek video go up. We had a few issues there too. And so we're late getting that one up. The giveaway. For this week, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know where you're watching from and you'll automatically be entered to win this. It's a Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brush and a set of the Tim Holtz stencils. This is their holiday selection. It's a fantastic three pencil or three stencil set. So that is the giveaway for this week. I think you're excited for your pencils. I'm excited <laughs> for my pencils. I got my pencils today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, a painter that gets excited about pencils. Amazon. So Amazon delivers on Saturday. Oh, it's wonderful. All right, guys. Uh, what else? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. We hit 3,200 subscribers this week. I was so excited. I get so excited over little things these days. So uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Join me here next Saturday. We've got another live and I think we're going to have something to announce next Saturday. We have something special coming up. We're leaving you little clues all over the place. So if you happen to think about, think about what you're watching and what you're seeing when you're watching, um, make mention, we might have something for you. So <laughs> yeah, we have something special coming up. And so we'll probably tell you about that next week. And he's playing with the camera. Get your fingers out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we've been a little goofy today it's been a great day and a great week and even better now that i've got to spend some time with you all right guys that's me for today Mwah! love you stay safe